something is off here. But I'm not sure what. Go to the intro. Go to the intro. We'll meet back up. We'll regroup, and I'll try to figure this out. Geography is everything. Yes. Geography is everything. Okay, I got it. Barry, you are slightly off center. There you go. That's better. Okay. So, um. A few things, uh, hashtag not a furry is, uh, perhaps applicable in this one particular instance. Although, to be fair, Chopper is half human. So, hashtag not half a furry. Yeah, that's it. Oh, by the way, also really important, um, do not let King of Lightning see this video, okay? Because he doesn't like Chopper very much. I, d I don't want him to have, like, a brain aneurysm or something. He just watches this and his just, uh, face goes red with rage or something. I, I can never talk to him after this. I'm setting everything up and I'm just like, man, I- I own a lot of Chopper stuff, um, copious amounts of Chopper, more than I figured, I just kept finding more and more of it as I'm digging through my boxes and I'm like, oh, I could use this for the video and this, I think we're good, oh no, I also have this, and this, and a wanted poster, and an alarm clock, and his backpack, and these two new plushies I got the other day, Buggy Chopper, and Lot Chopper, and Regular Chopper, Chopper Hat, Barry has a Chopper Hat, Chopper Pop, um, <laughs> So, yeah, Chopper, Chopper Week on the channel. This is just going to be a standard backdrop now. Okay, no, no. We're talking about the Torino Kingdom, or the Birdie Kingdom. This is, of course, the place Kuma sent Chopper over the time skip, and also explains why Rowlett is back there representing bird kind. Um, Tori just means bird in Japanese, so Tori no. Uh, also, no in Japanese, if you see that in, like, a sentence, denotes um, it's a possessive, like an apostrophe. So it's sort of like the bird's kingdom, the bird's control this kingdom. And while humans do in fact live on the island, it really does seem that they're at constant war. And the fact that these birds are not just like regular birds, like there are giant monster birds referred to as Masukere Domo Goeyu birds. Yeah, you ever heard of a Masukere Domo Goeyu bird? Well, let me tell you all I know about Masukere Domo Goeyu birds. <laughs> All right. So basically, what that is, and the, the name of the bird was actually given in a race in a recent Viva card. All right. So um, it's understandable if you didn't know that that was revealed back then because it wasn't. Masukere Domo Goayu birds uh, basically just translates out to "I am a Goayu bird." Or, hey, I'm a Goyu bird, because the sound that the birds make in the original Japanese are go. It, it makes that sound. So that's why they're Masuke Re Domo Goyu birds. So, yeah, okay. Well, it's not really important for the taxonomy there, but they're giant birds, okay? They got huge beaks. They could just peck your organs out if they wanted to. Or not even that. They could just eat you in one bite. They don't even need to peck you apart, really. Um, and that giant tree that's jutting out of the island. See, the geography of this island is really not much to talk about because there's not much land mass, okay? Most of the surface area of this place is this giant tree that's just jutting right out of the center of this uh, small patch of land relative to the uh, giant tree. And the tree has different levels levels on it might actually be that's actually like a good um setup for like a tournament arc or something in a different kind of shonen like welcome to the uh to torino kingdom for battle fest you must work your way up the different levels of the great god tree and then reach the top and fight against the king of birds you know i i don't know i'm just throwing out an idea or a D, &D campaign if you're doing a one piece D, &D campaign maybe like different levels up the tree and then you reach the top I, I don't know i'm just throwing out ideas okay in terms of geography there's really not much to talk about. On the actual island itself, there is a small village of at what it looked like at first uh, very primitive islanders. Like, uh, maybe I'm just thinking of the Funimation dub, because the Funimation dub made them just sound like, you know, typical, like, you know, cavemen dialects. Like, it's like, me, ug, me find tanuki raccoon, throw into pot, make good tum-tum feast, hunger bad, red tanuki raccoon good. You know, like that, that kind of way they talked. Um, so first, Chopper lands there, and while a lot of the other straw hats whenever they got sent somewhere by Kuma, it made sense right away. Nami got sent to Weather Area. Like, right away, just by seeing the name of the island, you understand why she got sent there. Uh, Frankie going to the Future Land. You know, he's a cyborg. He's an engineer. That makes sense. Chopper gets sent to the Bird Kingdom. Like, 
okay, he can talk to birds. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe Kuma didn't even know about the medicine and everything. That makes it even funnier because we later find out that the islanders are actually not as primitive as they seem. They're actually really intelligent. They have a full society there. They have a big library. They can read and write and they have books. So that means they have to have like a copywriter there or a printing press somewhere to have all the freaking books. They've studied medicine, all the different herbs on the island. So that's the place Chopper studied and get his little medical stat bonus when he returned to the crew later. He got new medicines and combined them with his previous knowledge from Drum Island and kind of merged them together to make all new medicine that, you know, really didn't exist anywhere else in the world. So that's all impressive. Um, these islanders also developed, like, rocket-powered spear technology. So they were chasing after Chopper with these spears that could shoot missiles at him. So they developed rocket-powered spear technology, but they can't figure out pants or shirts. That's something that they're still kind of like working out. Their top minds are in the lab every day trying to figure out how, how pants work. I, I don't know. It's a very tropical island. It's located in the South Blue. So maybe it's just, it, it, they never had any need for pants or shirts or anything like that. They're just like, hey, you know, it's a very tropical climate here. Uh, it never gets cold, you know, so we don't have any reason to wear it. Maybe the giant tree provides all the shelter from rain and the weather and blocks the sun to provide shade during a particularly hot day. So, I mean, why do you even need pants at that point, right? But okay. So maybe Kuma though, Kuma did not even know about the medical knowledge or the herbs on the island. I mean, maybe he did, but maybe he was just looking at Chopper, and at the point when Kuma sent Chopper to the island, he was in his monster point form. Chopper went monster point, began to rampage on Sabaody, and then that's when Kuma showed up and just knocked him away, right? Maybe Kuma was just like, all right, I, I have no idea what this thing is, you know, like, he d he doesn't know, because he only knows as much as, like, maybe what was on the Wanted poster, like, I he doesn't know he's the doctor of the Straw Hats, so he's, like, he's a pet, I guess, so I'll send him to an island with giant birds? Okay, pop, and then sends him there, but it turned out it, w it worked out great because of all the rare herbs and medicines and plant life and things. Okay, awesome. So, um, Chopper has to sort of play peacemaker with the, uh, tribe and the giant, uh, wait, Masuke Re Domo Go You Birds, all right? I'm like, I nailed that. As long as I keep repeating it, I can remember it, but other than that, I need to check it. Like, Masuke Re Domo. All right, gotcha. So, he has to play peacemaker, though, because when he lands on the island, he first gets attacked by the birds, then falls out of the tree, lands in the village, and the village has no idea what he is, so they're just like, oh, it's an animal that fell right in our village. Awesome, that'll be dinner tonight. Come on, kids, let's fry him up. You know, they're ready to throw him into a pot and boil him alive, uh, but Chopper manages to get, break free using his uh, his uh, human point there. He breaks the ropes, gets out, and he's like, you know, I'm not a tanuki or a raccoon. I'm a human reindeer, damn it. How many times do I have to say it in my life? Maybe Chopper, honestly, buddy, you should just start wearing like, uh, a name tag or carry little cards with you or, like, have, like, a little medical bracelet or something that just, like, in case he gets knocked out or something, it just says, Hello, my name is Chopper. I am a human reindeer. Please do not call me a tanuki and please do not boil me alive. I am smart enough to cure your sick if you, um, nurse me back to health, okay? I don't know how you would fit all that on a bracelet, but, you know, you, you figure out something. Maybe, like, little cards or something. Little, little medical cards just to keep track of. Keep it in his hat or something. I don't know. So, anyway, uh, after, you know, running from both of these parties for a while, after running from the giant birds and running from the islanders trying to escape, eventually he kind of, um, lets them know who he is and just like, Wait, wait, would everybody stop trying to hunt me? Okay, I'm not trying to hurt you. In fact, I might be able to provide a very important service here because Chopper, he can communicate with animals. He can talk to animals and he can, you know, translate that into English or Japanese or whatever language the characters of One Piece speak, okay? So he basically was the peacemaker there. He went over to the birds and he's like, hey birds, how come you're attacking the humans? And the birds were like, because they're trying to steal our treasure. Yeah, the um, Torino Kingdom is also known as a treasure island, okay? Or it, this is is the world of One Piece. There's pirates everywhere, so I would imagine there's more than one treasure island in the world. We're treasure island number 62 in this world, right? So the birds, they like shiny things, so they go out into the world and they collect shiny things and bring them back to their nests, and their nests are filled with these shiny, you know, like doodads and tchotchkes that they grab from all over the world. So, uh, also on this giant tree, though, is where the herbs and the medicine grow that the villagers need in order to stay alive, right? In order to cure their, their sick. 
sick. So they go up the tree to try to get the herbs, but the birds don't know that, and they can't communicate, so the birds think they're trying to steal their treasure, like a lot of other pirates come to try to steal their treasure all the time. So the birds are just like, any human that tries to trespass on our tree, we're just gonna just try to eat whole or knock them off or claw them with our giant claws. You don't want to piss one of these things off, okay? They're freaking ginormous, right? Um, so Chopper, you know, relays that information to the, you know, the humans. Like, hey, um, are you trying to get their treasure? And the islanders are like, no, little tanuki dog. We just try to get magic grass. To <laughs> <laughs> we just try to get magic grass so we can just chill out and watch freaking Netflix all day. That's what we do here. No, it's like we're trying to get medicine to cure our sick. We don't care about the treasure. Look at us. We don't even have pants. What would we possibly use treasure on, you know? Like, we don't really have, we kind of have this society where we all just kind of exist and just help each other out. We don't really have, like, um, like a general store or anything on the island, you know? It's just, that's not kind of what we do here. We're just a small little tribe, right? So Chopper goes back and tells the birds this, and is like, hey, they just want the magic grass. And the birds are like, oh. All right, well, everybody needs to share the magic grass. In fact, the birds thought that the magic grass should be available everywhere all over the world. <laughs> did you see what I did? Okay, but anyway, no, the birds were like, oh, yeah, you just want the grass? I'm like, okay, sure. So it was sort of this peace treaty between the birds and the and the islanders. They all came together, and they were like, you know, like, puts out his wing, and like, okay, we, we would now sign this peace treaty or whatever. They are a very civilized society. Oh, by the way, the only uh, human on the island that was given a name was uh, Shanba, and he was the one that kind of introduced Chopper to the library and everything. He was kind of like the main islander that kind of showed him around, but even then, we didn't get really a lot of much of him. I would like to think if this is, like, tribal society, I'm just going to say Shanba is their chief. He's their leader, okay? Um, so, yeah, that, that's the situation there, right? Like, whatever. And so, there's peace and prosperity now amongst the people there. The birds let them climb the tree and get the herbs and save everything, and, you know, the the people of the island don't screw with the birds otherwise, and the birds were like, all right, we're fine with you living down there. Oh my god, can you imagine the poo? Why would they choose to live under a giant, multiple giant bird nests? You know, maybe that was another part of the treaty. They were looking at the thing, he's like, also, just letting you know, uh, could you please poop out in the ocean? Could you please stop? Because we're like, yay, it's my 10th birthday. Congratulations, Ugg. Here's your cake. <laughs> It's like a splatter, it just covers the entire village, and just, ah, ah, okay, yeah, happy birthday there, Ugg, you know, oh. so, um, yeah, they, they, they probably, like, you know, worked it out, Chopper was there for two whole years, so I'm, hopefully, any, any issue that the islanders had with the birds, or vice versa, they, they worked that out, actually, you know what's funny, now that I think about it, the, Island is not just called, I mean, it, it is like Torino Island, like you could just call it that, but no, it's the Torino Kingdom. Now, maybe they were just doing that for the sake of just like, like I said, like a bird's kingdom, like, you know, it's the place that birds rule over, okay, so that, it's their kingdom, but kingdom kind of denotes a king, a form of government, you know, a land that's governed by some type of lord that's connected to the world government in some way, shape, or form. So that that's a little curious. Maybe maybe the birds are actually really intelligent. Maybe the birds flew over on top of the red line and they landed at Pangea Castle and the birds presented Im Sama or the Goro say, like, we would like to petition the, the government to allow us to have our own kingdom and be invited to reverie. And the Goro say, like, does anyone here speak bird? And, and Samurai Gandhi speaks bird. And he's like, sure. He's like, okay, you're sign the documents. You're, okay, you're an official kingdom. See you at the next reverie. We, ju we just didn't see the birds at this reverie, you know, because, you know, they were they were busy. They couldn't attend, you know. But there was a... There, at other years, there were giant birds there attending reverie, okay? There were freaking vampires attending reverie, all right? And there's, you know, merfolk and fishmen and all that stuff. Don't don't tell me giant birds could not be part of this. Morgans is exist, although Morgans is not a bird. He ate the um, the albatross devil fruit, the Tori Tori no me modeled albatross. So he's just a fruit user, but still, you know, giant birds in one piece, not the weirdest thing, right? So um, Chopper studied on the island. Uh, he actually took, uh, he adopted the uh, disguise of Chopper Mask for a little while there because he actually, he was probably the one straw hat that had the best shot of getting back to Saba Odi the fastest. Um, after he, you know, made peace with the islanders and the birds, that didn't take that long. That didn't take, like, years to do. That was just
just like, hey, simple misunderstanding, play nice and whatever, and we're good. And so one of the birds, you know, out of gratitude was like, all right, do you want me to do anything for you, chopper little tanuki reindeer guy? And he's like, yeah, I need to get back to Sabaody. And it's like, oh, that's just a, just a, you know, hop, skip, and a jump as the crow flies, you know, so jump on my back. And, you know, he just flew off to Sabaody. And on his way there, that's when Chopper got a newspaper from the news coup and was like, holy crap, you know, Ace is dead. And also about Luffy getting into Marine Ford and with the 3D 2Y tattoo. And he's like, okay, um, can you, um, I know I said I need to get back to my friends as soon as possible. Please don't stop. Go as fast as you can. But could you go back to Torino? Because I have to, you know, my thing here. So the bird's like, okay. They're like, the bird, like, from the South Blue to Sabaody, that would take, like, weeks when it comes to, like, sea travel. But, you know, flight, that's different. And like I said, there's really not much flight in the One Piece world. There's Eneru's Ark, there's the Flying Fish, but the Flying Fish have to gain, like, momentum first. Um, you know, I'm sure the world government tries to suppress flight technology as much as possible, right? And, like, Eneru's Ark was in the sky, obviously. They can't reproduce that right so you know there's there's flight and stuff i'm sure vegapunk could come up with that but there's nothing like biplanes or dirigibles existing in the one piece world right so just the fact that chopper befriended a giant bird that can fly at like the speed of like a jet or something that's pretty useful like immensely useful right and it actually kind of brings up a question like um you know why did chopper just choose to go back to torino like, at this point, keep in mind, when he made friends... Well, actually, no. I think he did. He discover the library beforehand. I think he did. I think he discovered the library before he left the first time, and he was like, man, you guys really are intelligent. You're not just a bunch of primitive, you know, idiotic savages that just spend all day just outside, you know, dancing around a fire. And uh, Sean Buzz is just like, okay, that was really offensive to call us that. But yeah, anyway. So I think Chopper, like, he saw that, and he wanted to stay... But instead, he had to leave. But then he found out he had two years to work with, and he turned right around. But, I mean, you know, with that giant bird that he could ask for rides whenever he wanted, Chopper could have conceivably went, like, anywhere in the world. Well, well, maybe not everywhere, anywhere in the world, but certainly anywhere in the South Blue, anywhere in the first half of the Grand Line, and anywhere in the East Blue. Maybe, maybe the birds, like, flying that high to go straight over the Red Line, maybe that might be a little iffy for them to get the... Although, there's, there's huge birds! Like, they're really big! Like, I mean, if there was any giant bird that would exist in the One Piece world that could fly over the Red Line, I would definitely say the Masuke Rei Domo Goa Yu birds, they, they fit the description, right? So, so maybe they could have flown over the freaking red line or whatever. Um, like, all I'm saying is Chopper, he could have just flown back to Drum Island to say hi to everybody if he wanted to. You know, he's on the island for two years. He has a giant bird that'll take him pretty much anywhere. You know, and the bird seems to have known where it... Well, maybe because they didn't have the Vivra card. Yeah, because Chopper had the Vivra card for Rayleigh. And maybe he was, like, directing the bird, you know. But then again, these birds are huge. They're probably used to flying all over the world. Or at least all over that general region. Like East Blue, Grand Line, Calm Belts, and South. You know, they're used to flying around all over there. Um, I'm sure they could stay airborne for quite a bit of time, right? Uh, and even if they had to stop to, like, rest for a little while, no one's gonna mess with them. They're giant birds, you know? So, yeah, Chopper could have flown pretty much anywhere, I guess, if he wanted to, but he decided to stay on Torino to study medicine as much as possible over that two-year time skip, and then after that, he got back on the bird again and flew back to Sab Odi, and then everything was, uh, copacetic after that, right? Um, so, yeah, it kind of makes me wish the giant bird would have stuck around a little longer, because that would have made... It's kind of like the giant eagle thing in Lord of the Rings. It's just like, why didn't they just give the ring or, you know, Frodo or somebody to the giant uh, eagles and then have him just carry the ring to Mount Doom and then just drop it in and then there you go, there's your movie. It's just like, um, well, you did, that would have kind of, you know, ruin the whole epic adventure of them traveling and, you know, the thing and everything like that. You know, I actually, I still haven't, uh, I read the first book in school, Lord of the Rings, uh, The Fellowship. I've never read uh, The Two Towers or Return of the King. I haven't even seen the movies of them yet, so that's like, and I, yet I've seen The Hobbit. So it's just, I'm very scattershot with that franchise. But yeah, um, anyway, yeah, yeah, so that's that's kind of the thing there, but they couldn't have kept him around like, hey, bird, why do we even need to like, how about we do this, bird? Fly over the red line, meet us there when we come up over from Fishman 
Pikmin Island, and you just grab the Sunny and just carry us to Raftal. Although, obviously, Luffy wouldn't want to do that, because that's the adventure. You, you can't just skip over it. Pretty sure also that the Nazgul would have just shot down the Eagles with the Fell Beasts, and also pretty sure the World Government, or Blackbeard, or Kaido, or Big Mom would have just shot down the giant bird if they would have attempted that anyway. You know, like, I don't think it would have been that easy just to fly onto Raftal or Laugh Tail, right? So, yeah, I, I hope the giant birds, though, appear again if they really need them. Maybe Chopper has, like, a little whistle where he could just blow and the, the birds hear him from the other side of the planet and just, like... Chopper Masks Needs Me, signing, we, we must fly to his destination. Uh, oh, and we do get it two years later, and we do see Torino Kingdom, and, uh, like, the birds and the islanders are getting along and everything. There's now a clinic on the island, because Chopper, you know, probably taught them a bunch of stuff about medicine that he learned, and so medicine on this island is really booming. Um, they still don't have shirts or pants, but... They do have little masks for the kids that they made because Chopper, he was embarrassed coming back the first time, so he had to disguise himself as Chopper Mask. Pretty sure that's the foxy mask he had during the Davy backfight he hung on to. It was like, when I, I, this thing is useful again. He put the mask on again, and he's like, I'm Chopper Mask. And they're like, hi there, raccoon. You just didn't want to, you were too embarrassed to come back, didn't you? And he's like, yeah. It's like, it's okay, it's fine, come here. We were just about to sit down to have dinner. You know, we don't eat giant bird anymore. We be happy. Oh yeah, there was also that that thing in the anime with the uh, the baby chick, that adorable giant like spherical baby chick that uh, Chopper found and was nursing back to health there. That was that was cool. In fact, I think it was uh I think it was implied in the anime that the bird that Chopper flew back on two years later was the bird he took care of those two years ago. Like, they go from chick to giant, you know, mountain-sized bird in the span of two years, which maybe they do. I don't know. I don't know the freaking... This this isn't biology is everything. This is geography is everything. We should do a whole new series where I sit down and study all the weird biological things of the One Piece world. Like, like you'd be wondering, like, that, what's the point of that? That's kind of looking too into it, but that's that is the point of that. Like, I pick out something in the One Piece world that doesn't make much sense, and then we sit down and we try to figure it out, right? That's the whole point of this show, kind of, right? So, uh, yeah. A anyway, um, that's the video. I think that's pretty much everything I have to cover. Island with birds and a giant tree uh, and lots of bird poo. Lots and lots of splatter pellet bird poo. It's like a freaking, you know, missile that's just dropping whenever they do it. Okay. Well, anyway, um, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, go and check out chopperstore.net. For all your chopper store needs, all your chopper stuff, you get chopper hats, you get chopper alarm clocks, chopper plushies, chopper backpacks. You know, if you want to be an aspiring doctor yourself, all doctors should really wear these. Um, all right, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna go have an adventure, guys. Signing out. <laughs>